You know, have you ever worried about your aging loved one um, if they're suffering from possibly signs and symptoms of isolation or is it loneliness? And is there a difference between loneliness and isolation? And what part did the pandemic play in, in this whole mess? And, and now that we have a, a, one of the top three, three trends in senior care is mental health issues. So we're going we're gonna to unpack that. We're going to talk about some signs and symptoms. And I want to welcome you. This is Tuesday Tips. My name is Pam Dunwald. I'm one of your nurse advocates from Your Nurse Advocate Consulting. We're here every Tuesday in our Facebook group and also on our Facebook page. So we are glad that you are here with us. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. First thing I want to talk, just spend a couple of minutes on the impact of the, the pandemic. And for those, you know, a uh, few years, I was still working um, as a hospital case manager and utilization review nurse at that time. And what we were seeing is if we had someone discharging from the hospital that was going to need, you know, nursing home stay, whether long term or short term just for rehab, and then they were hoping to go home, uh, that whole arena of getting someone discharged and placed in a nursing home was horrible. Um, you know, not only some units were closed, uh, off and on, they were isolating. And if you were a new person to the nursing home, and many of the nursing homes in our area in, in the Midwest here, is that you had to isolate in your room for 14 days. And so, you know, imagine, imagine you're someone who's gone from the hospital, you're now in the nursing home, your friends and family can't come and visit, uh, you're stuck in your room for 14 days, you eat in your room, you do everything in your room, someone will come and see you to bring you what you need, or if you put your light on, maybe help you to get to the bathroom. And you know, it's such a double-edged sword because you know, on one hand, we have all this isolation and, and that going on as a product of the pandemic, but on the flip side of that is, you know, no one knew what this pandemic was all about and everybody's trying to figure it out and they're just trying to keep people safe. And we knew that our elderly uh, people were more vulnerable uh, to to death with someone, you know, with suffering and with with um, getting COVID is that it was very, very difficult to, to know what to do. And looking back um, now, it's we are now for 2024 the top three trends for senior care is mental health issues, specifically de depression and anxiety. And they feel that is truly born out of the result of the pandemic and the isolation and loneliness that our aging adults suffered. Then number two, aging in place. And number three, multi-general uh, living, because people are what went on in the nursing homes is very fresh in people's minds. And, you know, even access to nursing homes is, has gotten to be much more difficult because we, you know, in our area, we have nursing home beds that are available, but they still have, are limited to the number of, of patients they, they can take because they don't have the staff to care for the residents that would reside in those beds. So access to healthcare, even a nursing home is still suffering um, the impact of the pandemic. So let's, we're going to focus on the next couple of Tuesdays. We're going to, this is all coming to fruition. We're having a free webinar. It is going to be on April 24th at uh, 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 Eastern. And we are going to unpack these three top three trends, mental health, uh, aging in place, and multi-generational living. We're going to have a workbook. This is all free. We're going to have a workbook that you're going to be able to follow through the webinar and, and maybe um, it's going to walk you through trying to identify things that would pertain to your family, whether now or whether in, in the future. So it can help you go, you know, what these trends are actually going to mean for you and your family. We're going to have some guests on there. We're going to have a, a, a woman who's going to be, uh, has been living multi-generational for many years and is now just in the process of selling her home and going to uh, get into another multi-generational living situation. And a multi-generational living situation is when there is more than two generations in the same household. So you have to have at least three generations in the same household for it to be considered multi-generational. So at least like grandparents, parents, and, you know, kids. And that's what um, is kind of the rule of thumb for, for qualifying it being called multi-generational. So let's get into, so the first of the three that we're going to unpack is the mental health. And we're going to look specifically tonight at isolation and um, loneliness. So when we look at those two, we're going to, um, when we're going to look at those two, we're going to, let's first take a look at to see if your aging loved one, no matter if they live at home alone or if they're in a nursing home or assisted living 
what are some of the things that puts them at risk? So let's go over a few of those things. So everyone, you know, everyone needs social connections to survive and thrive. I mean, we are we are social human beings. We we need that. So if you were a loved one, um, maybe more likely to feel lonely or socially isolated if any of the following apply. So if you have any of these risk factors, we want to be more aware of whether or not depression and anxiety could follow because you are, are suffering from loneliness or isolation. Number one, very, you know, this is kind of something that that is... Um, we can all agree with, and that's living alone. Living alone uh, creates an, you know, an environment of loneliness and isolation, especially depending on the uh, the mobility of the person that's living alone. Uh, number two, it takes that to the to the next step. They can't leave home alone. So not only do they live alone, but they can't even leave the home without someone assisting them. So that puts them at even greater risk. Another risk, if we're going to flip that coin over, they're a caregiver. So those adult children of aging parents, you know, maybe maybe that child, that adult child is a full-time caregiver. Now, because they are providing, you know, 24-7 care for an aging loved one, they may be suffering from loneliness and isolation because they are there isolated to the situation of being a caregiver. So it's not only just that aging adult that's, that could be prone to this, it's also the caregiver. Uh, the number number four is if you may be at risk if you have trouble hearing. Now let's, let's think about this a little bit. If you have trouble hearing, you're not able to participate in a lot of the conversations, maybe even going on in the same room. You could be sitting in a room full of your family members and they're having a conversation. And if you're hearing impaired and you can't keep up with the conversation, you're feeling lonely and you're feeling isolated because you can't participate in that. So let's think about that. So, you know, having trouble hearing. And maybe that would be if you have a, a, an aging loved one that is reluctant to maybe get a hearing aid. Maybe this is a good way to start that conversation and just go from it from a loneliness and an isolation perspective and just say, hey, mom, you know, we know you really don't want to get a hearing aid and, and we get that. I, I mean, yeah, people don't like to have to admit that they need one. That's another sign that they're losing control and they're aging. But you know what? We really don't want you to feel lonely or isolated because you can't participate in our family conversation. So maybe going at it from that perspective um, you know, rather than saying, you know what, you're, you're deaf is <laughs> you, you can't hear anything. And, you know, and it's very frustrating to try and talk to you because you can't hear what I'm saying. That just makes them feel worse. So, and, and I know it's frustrating on both sides. Um, next one, maybe they had a major loss or a life change, such as the death of a partner partner. And one of the things is our aging adults. And I've said this, you know, in different topics that we've talked about, is that as our aging loved ones continue to age, their circle, their sphere of influence gets smaller. And when I say, you know, circle or sphere of influence, that's friends and family that, you know, are, are their age. And so as they pass away, their circle shrinks and they get smaller and smaller, and they're losing the people that they can identify with the most. They may have, um, you know, children or grandchildren or great-grandchildren, and unless we find a way to bridge that gap and find common ground to be able to, you know, and, and, and there are a lot of things to do. I mean, you know, having your an elderly person share stories about themselves as a kid growing up with a grandchild. As, as a kid, I used to love to hear those stories from my grandma and grandpa. And, you know, that could be one way to, to try and, and bridge that gap and, and have them feel more connected um, and feel like they may have, you know, more in common rather than saying, you know, I'm, you know, an aging adult and, and I, I'm losing the people that I identify with. So think of some creative ways to try and, and, and bridge that gap between the, the ages there. Another risk factor is do you live in a rural, rural or an unsafe neighborhood? So a rural or an unsafe neighborhood is going to inhibit you possibly from getting out and getting out doing some activities or getting out and socializing, depending on, again, each one of those, those circumstances. The last thing is, is more of an emotional 
is a uh, risk factor, and that's feeling like a lack of purpose. And as we age, from being born as a brand new infant all the way through death, we have growth and developmental milestones that we have to reach as we age. And our aging adults, um, when they approach that final stage of growth and development, those last you know, golden years as an aging adult, that is one of the milestones that if they are going to have a successful um, final stage of that growth and development as they, they go about their golden years, is they have to have um, a purpose. And if they don't have any sense or of purpose, then they're not going to successfully meet the milestones for that growth and development stage at their age. And so I, I did, during our senior um, summit, we did a video with a gal from Catholic Charities. And if you have a Catholic Charities in your area, I highly recommend that you look into that I was amazed at all the opportunities and all the things that they have to help our seniors have a sense of purpose. They allow them to help out at the food pantry, at um, serving meals, they um, helping out going to grade schools and reading to kids. I mean, they had they had just a, a, a tremendous amount of things to support our aging adults that gives them some some way for them to feel that they have a purpose, something that they did over their lives. They could mentor many times. And also they have as many resources for those caregivers that are in charge of managing the care for those aging adults. They have a lot of resources for them. So my eyes were really opened at the benefits of participating in what the Catholic Charities uh, have to offer. So that's one resource that I could share right out of the get-go. If anybody would like to see that video, it's part of our series, but I could share that that one video if you'd like on the Catholic Charities. So just reach out to me and just put in direct message me or, or put it in one of the Facebook posts, just say Catholic Charities, and I'd be happy to get you uh, that video so you can learn more about that. So let's, as we wrap up, Let's flip the, the coin a little bit. Let's look at, at some tips and some ways that we can um, have our aging adults feel connected or stay connected. And the Catholic Charities would be one way. So as families that are, are, are caring and loving these aging adults, you need to try and schedule time each day to contact them. You know, um, again, this is one of the things when, and we're going to be doing a workshop later on um, early this summer on building a care team on a blueprint of caring building a care team on a budget. And one of those things is involving like a phone tree or, or putting pulling together people um, as volunteers to, to get us actually a schedule, or this is a good thing with your siblings. Your siblings that live long distance, this is an excellent way for them to give you some relief is to schedule a check-in call, you know, once a day or once a week or take turns rotating days. So to keep them connected in what's going on. I know my mother-in-law, she just turned 90 this past week and my sister-in-law lives in uh, South Carolina. She calls her every day. And my mother-in-law keeps track. She knows everything that's going on with my sister-in-law and her family in South Carolina. And my mother-in-law really looks forward to that. Now, once in a while, you know, we'll let my sister-in-law know if we're taking her out or we're doing something. She's not going to be around for that call. But my mother-in-law really, really looks forward to those calls. So that's something very easy. Uh, restarting an old, an old hobby, getting them interested, whether it's a craft or, you know, a baking or, uh, you know, going to a, a quilting club, something like that, card club, uh, even taking a new class to learn something new. And that's wonderful for aging adults because it helps to keep their brain sharp and helps to fight off you know, uh, dementia and, and as those things, you know, creep up as, as we get older. So it helps keep their brain sharp. We talked about with the Catholic Charities. Another one on the list is volunteering, volunteering to help people in their community. And the other thing is, and this, I have mixed feelings on this one. I love, love animals. We have horses, dogs, cats, the whole thing, but adopting a pet. And, and there's a, a qualifier on that. And that's if you are able to care for them. And that's that's a concern. If, if they don't have any trouble caring for themselves and they can care for a pet, you know, that might be a good pet. And maybe fostering a pet might be good that they're having a pet for a short period of time so that they're, they're not locked into, you know, like a forever pet as, as their condition may decline. So maybe just 
fostering a pet while while the shelter or whether the the rescue is actually looking for a permanent home. So that might be that might be something if they're an animal lover. So I'm going to go ahead and and wrap this up. And this was um, this was kind of our talk. And I, I know we talked about the difference between isolation and loneliness. And and the difference is is the loneliness is that you're not isolated, but you're not able to get out. And we talked about some of those things like hearing and, you know, can't leave home. And the isolation is that you're being isolated for, you know, a, a reason. So there are some minute, you know, differences in being lonely or isolated, but the bottom line, the result of both of them could lead to anxiety and depression. And that's what we want to make sure that we try and prevent. And please, I know if you have an aging adult that is reluctant to go see behavioral health because there's a stigma to that. I see that a lot. I see that with my own clients. And so we need to try and find a way, uh, find a way for them to even, you know, to try and accept some, some help there. So I know that's easier said than done in some instances, but it's no longer stigma. And a lot of time with, with uh, telehealth, you know, we can do it over a phone call if you're there and maybe it's a little, can be a little less intimidating than going into the office. So um, if you need any tips or tricks, you know, please reach out. We're happy to help. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and end this episode of Tuesday Tips and we'll see you back here next Tuesday for some more. Take care. And next week, I believe we are going to uh, talk about aging in place, what that looks like and what are the steps you need to take to try and make that happen. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.